Hello, today I'm going to show you how to tailor make a feed for a specific complaint. I'm going to be making a syringe feed for a chinchilla which has an ulcer. So I'm going to talk you through all the different ingredients I'm using and what they do. You will need a coffee grinder. I use a Krups, um, which was recommended to me by a nutritionist. You will also need a sieve for your hay. For hay, I use an organic Ings hay from hayforpets.co.uk. Um, you want to go for the dusty stuff at the bottom of the bag, which there wasn't very much of with this batch, so I've gone for it as small as possible. You might need to cut it as well before you get it in the grinder because that's really quite large. Or you can use something like ready grass, which is already a bit smaller. Um, I'm going to use my Animune powder from Galen's Garden. This is an antimicrobial. This is more often used in cases of infection. But where this patient is very stressed, stress always interferes with gut bacteria. And this is very good at helping to balance gut bacteria along with probiotics, which are, of course, essential. So I'm going to use some of that. I'm going to use some digestive, some digestive enzymes. Um, bromelain or papain are the best. Uh, there are lots of others which are very effective too. Um, this just helps with the breaking down of the food. So where his gut is struggling, this will help him. Chamomile. This patient is very, very hyperactive, so I'm going to put some chamomile in there to try to calm him and slow his whole system down. Calendula um, or marigold. Uh, this is a very good anti-inflammatory, um, and as his gut is likely to be quite inflamed, I'm going with a little of that. Um, Ribwort plantain, that's another fantastic anti-inflammatory. Uh, also, uh, that's from my local dispensing herbal apothecary. Um, so thanks to everybody at Maintree. I also have broadleaf plantain from Galen's Garden. Always fantastic stuff, Galen's Garden, because it's either organic or it's wild crafty. Um, both the ribwort and the broadleaf have the same properties. Um, wild crafted birch leaf. This is freshly picked and dried and it's very nice. Uh, birch leaf is an anti-inflammatory and it's also very good for UTIs. Um, this patient doesn't have a UTI, but I'm going for using it for the anti-inflammatory properties. Uh, where are we now? Okay, Arcvits. This is a broad spectrum multivitamin and multimineral, which is absolutely fantastic for chinchillas. It's got the A, C and E. It's got calcium and vitamin D3. You can't absorb calcium without vitamin D3, so that's essential. It's also got some other bits and yeah, it's got loads of other stuff in there. It's really, really great. Uh, what else? Last but not least, pellets. Now I use da, 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 Beef for Care Plus. This is the only feed that could give me a genetically modified free guarantee. Genetically modified pellets attack the gut wall. Do not listen to whatever people are telling you about genetically modified ingredients being safe. They are not safe. I am one of thousands of people who have conditions that basically arise from all these chemicals in our environments. If I eat anything genetically modified, I go into anaphylactic shock and get carted off in an ambulance. So take it from me, this stuff is bad. This stuff is great. There are other people who make good pellets. Galen's Garden do a lot of fantastic pellets. Um, they do a very good organic one, but it's very expensive, so I can't feed very much of it. I just buy a few and 
mix them in with my feet. The chins love them. So those are my ingredients. Now I'm going to pause and get myself organised before I start grinding. Another absolutely invaluable addition to your herbal apothecary is nettle. Um, this is organic nettle from my local dispensing herbal apothecary. And um, it's absolutely brilliant for removing cortisol from the blood caused by stress. It purifies the blood, it's an antioxidant, and it's a really fantastic all-round tonic. I feed it about three times a week um, in whole leaf in their bowls, and it's one of the few herbs that they will always eat. It's absolutely wonderful. I just wanted to go into the genetic modification situation in more detail. What I'm hearing from most people in this country is that they've noticed no ill effects from whatever small proportion of genetic modification there is in the feeds. But what I have noticed, and what happens if you have an animal that's sick, is that it will exacerbate it. I've also heard of somebody who's new to making feeds, making a chinchilla feed and kits being born very small with no tails. Now, if you don't have many customers and you're using cheap ingredients because you want to make a profit and you don't have many customers, then you're going to have to rely on genetically modified ingredients and that's obviously what's happened here. So do be careful what you feed because the greater the proportion of genetically modified ingredients, the more problems you're going to run into. Now, with an animal that's already become sick, it's crucial that you get them off the GM feed. So that's what I'm doing with this patient. She switched him from Science Selective, which is genetically modified. It contains a proportion of genetically modified soy and alfalfa. She switched him from that to Oxbow, um, which is likely to contain American GM alfalfa. Most um, alfalfa is coming from the States and they are having a terrible time with genetic modification in the States. Um, so I'm figuring where he's already switched from one feed to another. I find if you switch up in quality, you don't get the same issues with bloat as when you switch down. If you switched a chin from one GM feed to another GM feed, then yes, you could get bloat. I've switched animals from a GM feed to Beef Our Care Plus and had no issues at all, even though I've done it very fast. Simply because normally they just leave the GM feed. Chinchillas are very intelligent and um, they know what's good for them and most of the time they love this stuff and they just leave the old stuff. Okay so I won't bore you any longer on that topic. I've cut up my hay and I'm going to start to grind now. Okay when you've ground your hay you'll need to sieve it. And just pick out, you might need to pick out any of the larger bits as well because they will get stuck in your syringe. I'm going for quite a low proportion of hay in this feed because the uh, patient's lost quite a lot of weight. So I want enough hay to aid digestion and not so much that he's getting bulked up with hay. Um, okay, now I'm going to, I've got some beef that I prepared earlier. I always save the dust in the bottom of the packets in case I need to do syringe feeds. So I've finished my grinding and I'm going to show you the proportions of the various ingredients that I'm using. Um, hay, 
quite a small amount. This is my mix of herbs. This is mainly nettle and planting, a little bit less of birch leaf. Um, quite a lot of calendula, but not too much, and a small amount of chamomile. Um, and this is my pellets. You can see I've done, it's a bit more than half pellet to the other things. Uh, it's probably somewhere along the lines of four sevenths pellets, two uh, and one and a half of each of the others. Um, now with the digestive enzymes and the arc bits and the anemone, um, there's instructions on all of these as to what to feed per day. So I'm going to measure out what the chin should be eating per day and I'm going to put the amounts in with that and mix it all thoroughly and then bag it up for the patient. Um, so that's pretty much it really. Mix according to the instructions in part one with the butternut squash and you've got a really nice syringe feed. This herbs, herb mix with the calendula in it and the chamomile, it smells absolutely unbelievable. Um, I hope he's really going to love it. Uh, and it's incredibly good for him. So, Riley, get better or break your legs. Love you.